I'd like to call the August 28th, 2024 ad hoc committee meeting to order. Will the recording secretary please call roll? Annette Brown. Here. Jose Catinas. Present. Shereen Pabri. Present. We have quorum. Thank you. This afternoon, the ad hoc committee will interview a candidate for the public member position on the Committee of Credentials. The interview will be conducted via Zoom. At the conclusion of the interview process, the ad hoc committee may select the individual to recommend to the commission for appointment to the public member position on the Committee of Credentials. Any recommendations of this ad hoc committee will be presented to the commission at its August 2024 meeting. We will now open for public comment. Members of the public who are attending the meeting at the commission office will need to submit a request to address the commission card to the meeting moderator. Individuals who join the meeting via teleconference, please notify the meeting moderator by clicking on the raise hand icon if participating through Zoom or pressing star nine if participating by phone. Public comment is limited to two minutes per speaker. Recording secretary, are there any public comments? Thank you. Just wait a minute, just in case. No, nope. good. The public comment period for this item is now closed. Okay. The following interview is for the public member position on the Committee of Credentials. At the conclusion of the interview, the ad hoc committee will deliberate on the qualifications of the applicant. Our candidate for the public member position on the Committee of Credentials is Odette Christensen. Okay, we're letting Ms. Christensen into the Zoom. That Chris accept as a panel invite and uh, rejoin us as a panel. Can you please turn on the camera? Thank you. Hello, Ms. Christensen. Am I pronouncing your name correctly? I'm sorry, I didn't hear. My name is Odette Christensen. Christensen. Thank you, Ms. Christensen. Thank you so much for joining us at the Commission on Teacher Credentialing yeah, yeah. and for speaking with us today. We're going to ask you a few questions, and at the end of the interview, Thank you'll have you. an opportunity. Thank you. You'll have an opportunity to ask us any questions that you may have. Commissioners. Great. So I'm Commissioner Brown, and I have the first few questions for you, if you're ready. Mm -hmm. Okay, great. Are you currently employed in a certificated position in the public schools? Please note that a certificated here? Okay. I'll start that one again, just because you blanked out a little bit on our Zoom. Are you currently employed in a certificated position I did. in the public schools? Please note that a certificated position is any position that requires a credential that is issued by the commission. Pursuant to Education Code 44002, a credential includes any credential, certificate, life document, life diploma, permit, certificate of clearance, or waiver issued by the commission. Are you currently employed in a certificated position in the public schools? Please unmute your mic. Sorry, my mute button seems to be going on and off. <laughs> I am not currently employed. Thank you so much. Next question, are you currently a member of any governing board of a school district or county board of education? 
No, I am not. Thank you. Next question. The Committee of Credentials meets three full days per month and is required to prepare for the meeting by reviewing all cases for several days in advance of the meeting. The committee reviews educator misconduct cases to determine whether to recommend discipline on the educator's license. Do you believe that you can make this time commitment and review this subject matter? Yes, I do. Thank you. Please tell us why are you interested in serving on the Committee of Credentials? Um, I've been a lifelong educator. So now that I'm retired, I was looking for some way to contribute, continue to contribute. Thank you. And next question, do you know any of the current members who sit on the Committee of Credentials or the Commission on Teacher Credentialing? If so, in what capacity? I know Mary Sandy, does that count? <laughs> and would you mind just telling us the capacity that you know, Dr. Sandy? Uh, I, I taught her fourth grade son many, many years ago. <laughs> So she is, it lives in my neighborhood. Thank you so much. And the last question that I have for you before I turn it over to my colleagues is, um, oh, that was my last one. So, <laughs> do you know any current commission staff? And if so, in what capacity? So maybe your previous answer is commission staff. Would you mind sharing that again? That's do you know any co current commission staff? And then so what capacity? Only only Dr. Mary Sandy, that's the only person I know, and I was her son's teacher many, many years ago. Thank you so much. I'm going to turn it over to my fellow fellow commissioners that you can see on the screen. We have Jose Cardenas and Shereen Pavri joining me, and Jose is going to have the next set of questions for you. Commissioner Cardenas? Hello, Mr. Christensen. Christensen. Uh, my name is Jose Cardenas, and I have a couple questions for you. Uh, question number one that I have for you is, please describe your knowledge of the Education Code, California Code of Regulations, and case law as it relates to nexus to fitness to teach, adverse action against credentials, and the Committee of Credentials. Well, I was a public school teacher for almost 30 years, and so I'm also a, a association union representative and officer. So I had cause to bump up against that a little bit. And then of course, once I became interested in this position, I've been reading all about your work and all the things that you do and, and your past meetings. So I, I feel like I have a good idea about what it is that your commission does. Thank you. My next question, what strengths do you possess that would be assets to serving on the Committee of Credentials? What weaknesses may impact your service? Could you repeat that last part of the question? Was it weaknesses? Yes, what weaknesses may impact your service? Okay. Um, strengths, definitely, um, my experience as an educator, um, I've been a classroom teacher and a English language specialist and a reading specialist and um, I, I feel like I have a broad knowledge about public education. I am a very organized person. I've been in management positions before. I've um, been on several juries where I had to make difficult decisions and also decisions based on rules and regulations, which I see, it seems to me that that's similar to what you do. Um, my weaknesses, my weaknesses are understanding that people don't go into education because they want to get a lot of money. They go in because they, usually because they love children. And so, I think I would be thinking about people making mistakes and loving them still. But I think I could make that hard decision anyway. 
The other thing um, that I think might be a weakness is that I'm retired, but um, why is that a weakness? It's a weakness because I travel a lot, but my husband assures me that we could change all our travel to the beginning of the month. <laughs> Thanks for that. Um, next question. So the next question is going to be uh, several scenarios. So we'll go through each one. So please listen to each of the following scenarios. For each one, please discuss whether you would close the matter or recommend discipline on the educator's credential. Could you define that close a matter for me? Does that mean the same as dismiss? So, it, so closing a matter could be uh, closing the case altogether, or moving to uh, or moving forward. But closing the matter just it stops. Stops. Okay. Thank you. So I'll read this again. Please listen to each of the following scenarios. For each one, please discuss whether you would close the matter or recommend discipline on the educator's credential. Please explain, explain your decision-making process. Scenario number one, an educator has three felony drug convictions in 1997, 1998, and 1999. On each occasion, Educator was in possession of methamphetamine. I would recommend disciplinary action because that person is a felon. Okay, our second scenario. An educator learned that one of his high school students spent the night at his colleague's residence. The educator did not report this information to law. I'm, so, I'm sorry, but your audio, your audio is, your I'll, audio I'll, is really going in and out. I'm not, I'll, I'm not I'll understanding your question. So scenario number two. Thank you. Educator learned that one of the high school students spent the night at his colleague's residence. The educator did not report this information to law enforcement. Hmm. Disciplinary action. I think that that person needs to be re reprimanded in some way, told, told that they did the wrong thing. Okay, um, scenario number three. A male teacher appearing before the Committee of Credentials admits that he has taken one of his students to the mall and purchased clothing for the student, as well as provided transportation outside of the school. The educator and the student have exchanged text, text regarding the student's alleged trouble home life and dating life. The student's parents have submitted an affidavit to the Committee of Credentials complaining of the teacher's behavior. some kind of action, disciplinary action, because that is not an acceptable behavior. It's endangering the student. Those are all the questions that I have. I'm gonna turn it over to Commissioner Pavri. Good afternoon, I am Commissioner Pavri. Um, can, you, can you hear me? Yes. Wonderful. Uh, before I ask the question I had, I was wondering if I could prove a little bit about your thinking around the last scenario, where the teacher has been, uh, the male teacher had been taking the student. And I'm happy to read the scenario again, but just that would be to get a little bit more explanation from you as to your thinking. Please, please do read it again. Oh. A male teacher appearing before the committee on credentials admits that he has taken one of his students to the mall and purchased clothing for the student, as well as provided transportation outside of school. The educator and student have exchanged texts regarding the student's alleged troubled home life and dating life. The student's parents have submitted an affidavit to the Committee on Credentials complaining of the teacher's behavior. The I'm concerned that the... Please, go ahead. I'm concerned that the parents have complained about this. I'm not sure that parents are able to make that complaint 
Does it have to come through a principal or a other or a superintendent? But I'm that's what I'm concerned about is that if the parents have complained about it, then there's there's something that needs further investigation. Okay. Thank you. Appreciate that. All right, so I'll move on to the next question. And that is, if you would please consider a situation in which most members of the Committee of Credentials feel differently than you do uh, as to the recommendation of discipline. The deliberations indicate that five members oppose your recommendation and only one member agrees with you. How would you handle the situation? I. I am having some trouble with audio. I'm, I'm in my car on a hotspot on my phone, so I think it's on my end. But I think I understand your let question. Me, let me repeat the question. And, Make sure you've heard it. Shall I repeat the question? Okay. I'll, I'll speak louder. Okay. It, please consider a situation in which most members of the Committee of Credentials feel differently than you do as to the recommendation of discipline. The deliberations indicate that five members oppose your recommendation and only one member agrees with you. How would you handle this? Well, first of all, I would want to make sure that I had exhausted all possibilities of understanding each other. So, I would want to make sure that all members have had a chance to explain their thinking to each other. But I can understand that 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 might happen and we might still agree disagree. And I don't I don't know what the rule is in your commission if it's like a jury where you have to all agree or or it doesn't go. <laughs> no. Okay. I'm understanding some so majority then, vote. Um, majority vote. It's a majority vote. Well, if I felt like I had exhausted that and I didn't didn't agree, I would still go along with the majority if that was the the way that it's run. Thank you. Um, the next question: When faced with a difficult case in the committee, which do you think should be given greater weight: the protection of the teacher or the protection of school children? School children. Say that again. You like to speak to that a little bit. Um, children, in in my career, children have always come first. That's our priority: is that children are safe and that they are being provided everything they need as a whole whole child, social, economic safety, physical, everything. So that that's first. Thank you. All right. And um, on to the last question we have for you. You are very concerned about a case that you read as a member of the Committee of Credentials because the case involves a close friend of yours. After you read the case, <laughs> feel that the facts reported to the commission by the district about your friend are false. You feel obligated to inform your friend and you feel that the committee should close the case and take no discipline on your friend's credentials. What issues should you consider before proceeding? My first reaction to that is that that would be very inappropriate, and that if I was friends with someone who came up, I should excuse myself right, right away and not have a discussion with my friend about it. Great, thank you so much. Okay, Ms. Christensen, thank you so much for joining us. And we wanted to ask, do you have any questions of us today? Um, no, I don't, and my internet seems to be getting more and more unstable, <laughs> so I think I should leave. <laughs> okay, well, thank you so much, Ms. Christensen. Uh, we will now disconnect this call and deliberate. 
Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I'd like to thank the public member applicant who interviewed today. We're grateful for her willingness to serve on the Committee on Credentials. We have heard from public member applicant Odette Christensen. We're here to recommend appointment of a public member applicant to serve on the Committee of Credentials. Let's discuss our thoughts on the strengths and weaknesses of the applicant. Commissioner Cardenas, did you want to start us out or Commissioner Pompey? Well, I'll start off just with the strengths, definitely um, talking about some of our pillars is our children are first and the safety of our students. And that definitely came up. That's one of my strengths that I would like to. So clearly, clearly the candidate has deep and rich experiences and is extremely committed to the profession and to the well-being of, of young people. Um, I think she's extremely knowledgeable and has done a lot of reading about uh, what the Committee on Credentials does, how one uh, engages, and of course we'll go through training once she becomes, if she were to become uh, a member. Um, She seemed very sure of, uh, you know, of her values and her commitment and her commitment. Um, And I thought on, on, on most instances, and I go back, especially to the scenarios, the three scenarios that, uh, that were read. Um, I mean, a couple of them are, are more black and white and then others may be a little bit grayer in, in my opinion. And um, I mean, where she saw something cross the line, she clearly wanted that further investigated. And I think that was, that seemed appropriate. Um, I did have some questions, which is why I probed the last scenario, because, uh, you know, oftentimes teachers go above and beyond the call of duty to assist kids when they're maybe, you know, experiencing lack of housing, clothing, and, you know, those kinds of things that are that were demonstrated in the third scenario. And so I was looking to see a little bit more about um, a more balanced view or multiple viewpoints about why a teacher might take some a student to the mall. Um, so that I had a little bit of questioning about whether, whether um, she was viewing everything holistically and taking multiple points of view and multiple frames of reference in mind. Um, if I could add also, um, I agree with the strengths that have been previously mentioned. Um, I did note in uh, a few of her answers, um, she did refer to um, an understanding that some of her decisions might have to be flavored by what the rules and regulations that the committee has to follow. So um, I did um, appreciate that and see it as a strength because while you may have a personal reaction, you really have to be mindful that the work of this committee is grounded um, with some parameters. Um, and she even asked on um, question 10, she did say, I, we would need to know what's the rule. And I, I did um, appreciate that. She also did make reference to her experience on a jury being able to make difficult decisions based on the rules and regulations. So I did see that as a strength that she understood that in different circumstances, you really have to be grounded in what those rules and regulations are. Um, I also did appreciate her answer in number 10 to exhausting all um, opportunities to understand each other. Um, I saw that as a real strength on the committee because it is a varied committee for um, different reasons to bring multiple perspectives to every situation. So I thought 
um, knowing that it takes some work sometimes to understand someone else's perspective, I also saw as a strength. Um, and also, I think, um, I think Commissioner Pavri, you spoke to um, her confidence in um, her uh, values. And I think that was really um, came to light also in question number 12, when right away she said that she would have to excuse herself or recuse herself and not speak to someone that she knew. So I also saw that as a strength. The only concern that I had was question seven. Mm -hmm. um, I like that she had a background as a union rep, so that means she was definitely involved in transportation. So I think all of us always have something to learn, right, about Ed Code, um, California Code of Regulations, um, and even case law. So I think it is something that, as you go through this process, um, you learn even more. Um, so I was looking forward to the sense that she had some background with the representation. Her, her reasons for accepting this position, despite being retired and having a full life, as she talked about, she's carving out time because I think she really values what this committee does, values safeguarding our young people um, and, and ensuring that our, our teachers are, are both supported, but also disciplined when, when uh, the situation warrants. Uh, I think she seems to have strong ethical values and obviously understands issues of confidentiality and all of that based on the questions that we had. So um, I, I don't know if we're exhausted in our deliberation, if we want to move forward with the motion or... Any further discussion? Or do I have a motion for the selection of a public member? Yeah, I'd just like to add, um, just her experience that she talked about having a... a broad knowledge of uh, education through either um, an educator specialist or a classroom teacher. I mean, having that broad knowledge, you have more of awareness of what happens in a school building or in a district. She said she was a teacher, a reading specialist, and uh, um, I think she had one ELA specialist as well. And some of her letters of reference speak to her helping with administrative tasks, being an administrator in charge when a principal was out, things like that. Any further deliberation? Are we? That's all I have. So do I have a motion for the selection of a public member? So moved. I have a motion by Commissioner Pavri. Do I have a second? I second. Okay, I have a second by Commissioner Cardenas. Will the recording secretary call for the vote? Yeah, Brown. Aye. 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 Thank you so much to Commissioner Pavri and Commissioner Cardenas. Uh, the ad hoc committee's recommendation will be presented to the commission at tomorrow's meeting. This concludes the business before the ad hoc committee and we are adjourned. Thank you.